Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. Do you like to laugh, geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Pass to Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. We're back with another episode of Horror Movie Night, and this week we are talking about Shriek of the Mutilated from 1974, so we're getting in that 50-year anniversary just in time. <laughs> yeah, just good job, Kyle. Time. That's definitely the reason why you picked this shit. Why just you tell us? Wire. Explain to us the, the trajectory of this movie, because I have so many questions. You know, so here's here's what happened. I picked Demon, Demon Warp uh, originally, and I picked Demon Warp solely based on a poster and George Kennedy existing in the piece. Very cool. Like, you know, but then I I watched it. It's a, you know, the only way you can watch it is a VHS YouTube rip. And, you know, I got 30 minutes into it and there just wasn't a lot there for us. I felt, and then I was like, Oh, but then like, if any listeners want to watch it too, like they have to sit, I just, it just Uh. felt like I wasn't, doing anybody any favors right so uh i opted to try to pivot a little bit and still i still wanted to do a cryptid i still wanted to do like a yeti bigfoot situation it felt fall like i I don't mean i don't i think we've talked about this on the show before like sasquatch sightings i think we're in the summer but like for some reason for me they feel fall Wintery. related and this is yeah. more of a yeti anyway and yeti is closer to win- so anyway i had i had thoughts um and i remember that i had watched shriek of the mutilated uh a few months ago and i had a lot of fun with it it's uh it's schlocky it's 70s it's like vinegar syndrome put it out so it has like a really nice transfer i think on tubi but did you watch did you watch the the blu-ray or did you watch the tubi version because apparently you may have missed a very random song that appears in the movie if you watch the blu-ray i watched the blu-ray um, and there is a, there is an incredible song right out the gate called Hot Butter, which okay, is then yeah. then that's the okay then okay. that's because the information <laughs> I read butter. was that the DVD doesn't feature the song Popcorn, which is the instrumental that plays at the party. The pop 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 which is the best yeah. part oh, no. of the movie. No, in my this, opinion. this had that, and this Good. was wait wait probably, wait yeah. Is it Popcorn or is it Hot Butter? It's a song called Popcorn by an artist named Hot yes, Butter. I'm pretty wow. yes, sure. The, Dude, the, yeah. that's insane. Like, that <laughs> makes the watch worthwhile right there. This is the information I needed. Wait, to, was like... this the first time you heard this song, Scott? Yeah, Matt. I've never <laughs> okay. heard buttered or a popcorn by Hot Butter. Like, don't ask me questions like, I'm the weirdo. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, well, okay, so a few things about, because this is like a we could do it as a one hit thunder, thunder episode. Yeah. Um, It's a late 60s, early 70s song that was covered. It was originally a musical composition called Popcorn that was done to test the style of a Moog synthesizer. Like that was like what it originated as. 
Um, and the name comes from the fact that it's the combination of kitschiness with pop music. So they were like, oh, it's oh, corny. Pop corn. It's okay. pop music. We'll call it popcorn. And then, yes, a band called Hot Butter, a American pop group, covered it in 1972. And it was like a huge hit at the time. It's a um, crazy this blows song. My yeah, I mean, fucking I, mind. I that was a hit. for anybody like, to listen I, to that song <laughs> and then watch that scene. Like that, like that scene with the song is... It's so bizarro. Um, that scene and it's not is like fun. a very exciting it's scene. Though. It's just yeah. it's a college party and it's a weird college party that's serving popcorn. Like they they felt the need to have a popcorn machine yes. at this yes. college yeah. party to and, emphasize the song, I guess. And, and here's and here's why I'm like mentioning this, right? So this this is just a factoid. This didn't cross over to the states, but the song Popcorn was a huge hit in Europe. It hit number one in France. Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, and Norway, usually holding number one for nine to ten weeks, and ultimately became the best-selling single of 1972 in Europe. What? So, like, <laughs> I'm so I like am the, aghast. So the idea, so you're aghast, but the bigger question is, how the fuck did the people who made this trashy, low-budget movie even get the okay to put it yeah. in their weird this, scene? This is a really odd thing and i did i dug into the blu-ray a little bit just to get an idea of what's going on um there's like a locations feature there's an interview with the producer ed alum who uh also did invasion of the blood farmers which that was the next like, thing that comes up on tubi by the way yeah 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 yeah. so you know it's so if, if any of those things are making sense to a listener then you know kind of what you're what you're in for but um just for the uninitiated, which I think should be the segment that, uh, or at least the name of the thing that we say before we get into the breakdown of the movie. But okay. um, uh, Shriek of the Mutilated follows uh, Professor Prell's anthropology class at Fordham University that plans a field trip to the hills of Westchester County in search of the Yeti. However, this class finds out that this field trip happened seven years prior and nobody came back except this doomsayer who has the worst hair who shows oh my up God. at this popcorn party yes. and drunkenly tells the story about how nobody survived and that Professor Prell's hunt for a Yeti is insane. Uh, of course, Professor Prell is not there to, um, to defend himself so, because yeah. he has taken his star pupil out to a fancy dinner to eat a thing I forgot to write down. It's like Jinsun. It's like Jin, it's Jinsum, like, yes. Jinsum, you know, not dim sum, Jim sum. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, it's so much, Jim. man, I didn't even put that together. And I was like, this yeah. is fucking dumb. I, I, yeah. So, so many times in this movie, I was like, this is so fucking dumb. And the, uh, yep. the rest of the movie, I was like, I can't believe that Brian and Kyle have the exact same taste in movies. <laughs> they have the exact same. I, Scott, I've been saying this since the... I don't know how it happened, but no matter who we pick as our third co-host, they pick the same schlocky crap every uh -huh. single uh -huh. time yeah yeah no no Brian, this no this i felt i felt brian uh inside every, me his balls are on my sweater his balls are um, listen for, i kyle you haven't had this yet because you actually do like your research and the movies work but but <laughs> there has been i would say every time that we've had a third co-host there has been a point where Scott and I are like, look, we got to vet your picks for a little yeah. bit. <laughs> like, yeah. The only reason I let this one go because I knew it was going to be fucking terrible and super boring is the runtime and the, the denouement at the end because I know when yeah. this is coming out and it fits perfectly. Surprisingly. Like, I, I want to add fit. something real quick to the thing Kyle's talking about. The student that survived, mm -hmm. uh, Spencer St. Clair, Thank you, Spencer. Yeah. Um, he's not just a former student. He's also the groundskeeper at the college now, yeah. which makes his yes. presence at this party all the more confusing. Really confusing. <laughs> it feels a little blackmail-y somehow. Like, some, like, I don't know why they still keep him around. Like, I guess just to keep an eye on him. Like, his girlfriend's trying to keep him in check, but he's oh, at this I, party. And... I can tell you why they keep him around. Yeah. I can absolutely tell you why they keep her okay. on because it's revealed at the end of the movie. So okay. I won't get into too many details because I'll let you tell the story beats. But they yeah. say that someone always has to survive to tell the tale okay. of the Yeti. So they probably okay. keep him at the school because he won't shut the fuck up about how yeah. he was attacked by a Yeti uh, one time. Seven uh, years okay. of well, just <laughs> embarrassing himself well, at parties. The, time, the timing <laughs> works out great because later that night he continues to drink and drink and drink. 
Oh. Oh. Some might even call him a lush. Uh, I'm drinking <laughs> lush from Frost Beer Works. Um, not out of a Yeti, unfortunately. Um, but Scott, were you? Are you thirsty too? I have something from Off Color Brewing, which actually, in retrospect, seems very helpful for this movie. It's called Apex <laughs> Predator. It's got a giant lion with a giant mane on it. But um, when you get to the 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 surprise ending of this, we really understand who the apex predator is. That's right. Yes. That's I also right. I must Cheers. say that I did zero research before oh, we terrible. dove into this. And I was blown away that this was a Yeti movie. <laughs> um, did you look at the poster, Matt? Because it's... No, I looked at I'm telling you, I looked at nothing. Yeah. And I just like I, I you know, I hit that button on your remote control and just said Shriek of the Mutilated and they like took me to Tubi <laughs> and started playing. And then the opening is all this like Yeti footage and I'm like, wait, is this a Yeti movie? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, got it, so I didn't excited. know it was a Yeti. I mean, I got it in the uh, that one year that fucking nothing about this movie and picked it anyway. <laughs> subscriber <laughs> you know i was when i that once a year that i was a subscriber it got sent to me and i did i mean the the vinegar syndrome artwork doesn't really scream yeti the poster the reversible poster does but i still i don't know shriek of the mutilated just does not i don't know i it's don't know a it sick doesn't name for a movie though it's a sick name for a movie so, and like so in the 70s had... it came out so that's like they got on it early it's great well and there's a couple other names according to wikipedia anyway it was also released as mutilated as well as scream of the snow beast Okay. Um, All right. Honestly, Scream of the Snow Beast is the best fit for it, but there's no snow in this. Like, isn't that yeah. Yeti hot? <laughs> yeah. yeah. The Yeti, we'll get into that. But also, I do. <laughs> the other thing I need to call out is while Spencer is telling the story of what happened, mm -hmm. it is. They're doing this effect where it is the most washed out footage you could possibly have. Like, oh. it is just white with like the whisper yes. of yeah. an outline of a person. <laughs> yeah, it was I think that that was the attempt at at snow. They're like if we can't do day for uh... night, then we'll do summer for for summer for winter and uh, just make Well, you the, know what the best thing about it is that they white. didn't do summer for winter. They did it, they actually did it looks like they filmed it in it November. Is, like it yeah, looked it, is, it looks it exactly like when this is coming sure. out. So we're good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, Spencer fucking dis just destroys this party, leaves, continues to drink at home, gets yelled at by his his girlfriend, and then um, attempts to murder his girlfriend with a with a uh, what looks like a carving knife, like an electric carving knife. Um, and then he goes and takes a bath, drinking more in the yeah, bathtub. Yeah, his shower beer, his bath beer. He had a sh he had a bath beer, which was very nice. Bath beer, bath bombs, uh, and then. Uh, but the girlfriend wasn't dead, and she seeks revenge by dropping a motherfucking toaster into the bath. Like it was genius. incredible. It was genius. She crawls to she army crawls to the bathroom, and, and then this. So now there's nobody to tell the story of the Yeti except for hopefully these next group, somebody from this next group of um, students. Uh, so the field trip commences. Can, can we be? Yes. Before we Go jump to the field trip, because this is the most, in my opinion, this is the most interesting scene in the entire movie. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, that, 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 that no killed? blood gets on the white walls. That no, no blood fucking... gets on the white walls. Like the the operatic music playing in the score as mm -hmm. like she smashes his glass bottle in the sink, oh, and then yeah. he just grabs the electric carving knife. Jump cut to man drinking a beer, fully clothed in the tub with blood splatter, and then he just takes the little brush thing to yeah, like, he's like gently slowly cleaning himself. Yeah, <laughs> like, and then we get like girl crawling to tub with toaster. in it. The best part it. about it is like... she's pushing the toaster as she's crawl. It's not like she has it like in her hand. She's like. No. Uh, yeah. And then she jumps. And this is literally, this, this was the point where I wrote, what even is this movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I was watching I forgot it about that. I forgot about that scene in particular. And ironically, uh, that's the a, one scene I'll never forget in this yeah, movie. I yeah. think. Well, you know, and it's a, it's a, it's a seventies two slicer, which may, which looks like a two thousands eight slicer. It's the same, Dude, you know, it's the same they're size. The exact same ones. And, that, <laughs> listen. So, this is going to be the first Thanksgiving when, without my dad, but for the last mm. at least five, I have been the one to carve the turkey, which is mm. hilarious because I haven't eaten turkey in 12 years. <laughs> That's the exact same carving knife. Like they, they have, oh, is they, it? it peaked in the 60s, man, that the, yeah. the design cannot be made more perfect. So they just haven't. No. Yeah. Oh, it is. And they Even don't, the plastic is they still don't off die. <laughs> 
They don't die. Yes, yeah. Did they did they sell it off white? Did it or did it age with that with all the turkey uh, juices? Who's to say? We don't know. We weren't around. No. Um, <laughs> so this field trip commences, and Professor Prell takes his class to Carl's property. And I I don't I did not hear where the connection with Carl is. I, let's just say that Carl's property is sort of where the Yeti has been seen most and carl is also a yeti hunter um, i wonder also why on carl's it's been property. seen so much there kyle it's re- it's a curiosity uh <laughs> that i know nothing about you know for somebody who's seen it so much i can't believe there's less evidence um but there is a mute native american who looks like steve carell uh who is he chopping does. wood um he looks exactly like steve carell. He's- his name was hey. ivan in real life ivan. my spider sense is tingling i don't think that that's mm-hmm. actually a real native american <laughs> No dice, no dice. He's 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 closer to Steve Carell than he is to a Native American, um, and it's not problematic at all. Um, so the, the the next morning they venture off into the woods, uh, set to insanely dramatic music. If you thought the opera in the bathroom was crazy, wait till you hear them just walking leisurely, walking their first venture into the woods, six a.m. and it is it seems like they're gonna you know get killed by the Yeti right then and there. Our first kill occurs at the hands of the Yeti. Uh, who we finally see in like living color, and it looks like a triple A baseball mascot uh, <laughs> coming to kill uh, this one guy who is sort Tom. of like the he's seen Bob. He seems kind of the loser of the college group. There's four college kids. Uh, Lynn is the best. Um, Lynn is they, absolutely the best. Lynn is uh, the devastated best. Lynn dies so early. When Lynn died, man, those fucking glasses, the red hair. She is the hippest chick around. Uh, she's my number one. Uh, I guess the kind of the, like the the brown noser or the the uh, isn't she yeah, the Keith? one that like gets turned down at the popcorn party because she like goes yeah. up to talk to some guy and when his girl goes to get like another drink or something, then the girl comes back and like hedges her out. And I'm like, I, I want to talk to the girl with the glasses. I want to talk to she, Lynn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and she was to but she's the main character. Right, well, and right. also like you got to give credit the actress playing. Lynn not phoning it in in this movie. There's no. a lot of phoning it in in this movie, but but not yeah. not from Darcy Brown. Uh, Let's go, Darcy. Also, also have to shout out. I got the Wikipedia page open here. Outside of the husband and wife duo that worked on this movie, there is not a hyperlink to be found. <laughs> <laughs> she scroll through this. <laughs> like, no, no, there's not. There's not. The this attack unnerves the whole entire field trip, so they decide that they will shoot a rifle two times every thirty minutes until the next morning, <laughs> um, which is a normal <laughs> which is a normal response uh, to make sure that everybody is safe. They they just they and they they spend about three minutes deciding uh, the schedule of shooting the rifle two times every thirty minutes. It's really kind of a crazy uh, scenario. <laughs> um, so uh, it works because we make it to the next morning. Um, but basically, the, I, I, what happens is this Yeti takes out Lynn, big bummer, and then sort of terrorizes the other woman uh, that's around the house. And we yeah. start to realize that the Yeti is not just a Yeti who's out to do Yeti things, uh, has other uh, motives. So uh, I wrote, this movie has everything. There's seduction. There's severed limbs. There's a fucking dork as a woman who is cute as hell who loses her glasses in the woods and then gets her foot stuck between two rocks before being slaughtered by a Yeti. That was Lynn. Um, uh, Then these uh, two dead bodies are helpful because they could be used as bait for the Yeti. But that's a moral dilemma for our remaining live students. And that's where things get a little tricky because now Professor Prell and Carl are recommending that we use these bodies – Pretty quick, pretty quickly after their deaths to try to lure the Yeti in. Well, you got to do it while it's fresh, Kyle. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you want to treat, treat the Yeti with respect uh, <laughs> and you want to offer it fresh, dead humans. Uh, yeah. And we just happen to have two right here. Yeah. Um, It'd be more disrespectful to have to microwave them to warm up the bodies for the Yeti's liking. So you got to strike yeah, while it's warm. Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> it, 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 respect their respect their nature. Respect um, where it, they've Matt. come from. Make me swallow uh, wrong. You know, it's revealed to us that this Yeti is not a Yeti. If you've got, if you if you figured that out yet, I think that which, seeing the costume really, I mean, sets that up. Like, well, yeah. If but here's the, the thing. Here's the thing. Like, yes and no, right? <laughs> because 
this movie doesn't really have much of a budget. So for a while, I was just buying it as like, man, yes. that's a shitty ass Yeti costume. But like, it's no different than like the creature from the haunted sea costume. You know what oh, I mean? Like, it's that? like, what? No, this is what you bought it. And they're also like really shooting around it. It's shot. So I'm like, OK, they just had this cheap ass costume. This is the best they could do. Yeah. No, when they when found the bodies in the greenhouse pretty well kept, that's when I was like, I think yeah. there might be something nefarious happening. <laughs> yeah. I like how it took Matt that long when I told you guys in chat what this was. <laughs> that was a good um, look, yeah. Matt I, probably forgot. I know. Okay. I, I caught that. I caught that. But I thought that that was just an in addition to. Yeah. Like, no, I, I no. It's it is it is a full it is a full portion of this film um it turns out that uh sorry i i i had a I, I didn't write the remaining paragraph this is 1 a.m that i was watching this i was um out of my mind but what happens is it turns out it's all a ploy by professor uh prell and company to harvest bodies uh to eat because they are a devil cult uh, cannibalistic we, devil cult can, cannibalistic devil cult and jim sum the delicacy that homeboy and professor Prell, keith and professor prell were eating at the beginning of the film is actually a precursor to eating some really like table side gym sum uh at this cult party which he's you know professor prell and carl have invited uh a who's who of westchester county uh <laughs> to come and partake on these four and all of students. them are fucking problematic costumes all of them are yeah. are stereotypes and problematic but we do get a beautiful uh beautiful final line from steve carell uh laughing crow <laughs> uh who is this is the first time he speaks and the last time he speaks and he asks keith if he'd like white or dark meat as he also holds up his carving knife uh, which was which I was funny because you know we had we had Spencer kill with a carving knife and then we had uh, you know it's bookended pretty nicely here. Yes, absolutely. Um, they they did that on purpose. And, they literally wrote the yeah. beginning and the end of this movie, and then the rest was kind of Blair Witched. The rest, yeah, they just <laughs> ripped, they ripped yeah. it out in the woods. Um, yeah. I've got some great news for anybody listening to the podcast right now. I did a quick Google cannibalistic death cult not taken as a band name. Hell so. yeah. How how is that? <laughs> Do you know how Ow. many shitty fucking death metal bands I've played with in my adult life and cannibalistic death cult is not one of them? Look, Insane. I'm just saying I think we have the sequel to our cutie patootie death metal fun. I, I'm I am writing that shit down. What uh cannibalistic death cult. Death cult. Cannibalistic, cannibalistic or cannibal death, death cult? cult? I wrote cannibalistic death cult. Uh, is what I searched. Uh, wow. Yeah, this wow. was a hell of a movie, Kyle. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know how much I'll ever rewatch this movie. Um, yeah. Because it does. It's like the parts that are good uh, are really buried in some parts that are slow. No doubt. Uh, which I feel like, you know, stay tuned. We might be repeating this next week, too. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, at least, but next week's move. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you can't deny science. Uh, of next week's pick uh, <laughs> and, and, the, and the duration, but uh, you can you can't also deny my feelings. It's my truth, uh, and that shit was fucking long. No, this is this, I I I think that um, Shriek of the Mutilated. Yeah, it's not. It isn't one that I recommend, but I do think that there are there aren't enough like Yeti movies. I, truly, I think that there could be more as far as like cryptid sort of. I mean, any really Bigfoot movies. I, I don't think that yeah. there's enough good ones it does this doesn't yeah this doesn't what's the one know, with isn't um, a good one bobcat goldthwaite in it or willow, willow creek. creek i was gonna say willow, willow creek, creek's yeah. arguably the best one and that one was like yeah. done as a as a like parody? i'm pretty I'm, as a fucking goof well it was, well, it was done a done pastiche, as, not, a, not a parody yeah, but a pastiche. It, i'm trying to remember the exact story but i think it was something along the lines of like bobcat goldthwaite was just like man found footage is fucking stupid but he had like never watched one so he's just like i'm just gonna make one with no context at all and see and then watch a bunch <clears throat> and see how close i got to it and then he's like i did all right <laughs> like, <laughs> it's a real, real bobcat shit to do yeah. um but i like but and then this also as as scott had mentioned I mean, it is a cannibal whoopsie. I mean, we're in the month of November. It does uh, fit in very nicely uh, to kind of what we aim for come come autumn, uh, yep. autumn. So I I I, I want it, and I I think that if anybody does take a chance on it, they'll have fun. 
it doesn't have a lot of rewatchability, uh, but it is it is a joy for those people who like some 70s schlock. Want to shop Walmart Black Friday deals first? Walmart Plus members get early access to our hottest deals. Join now and get 50% off a one-year annual membership. Shop Black Friday deals first with Walmart Plus. See terms at walmartplus.com. Do you like to laugh, geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day, but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one-hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Past the Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. Are you a fan of young adult novels? Have you ever wondered the stories behind the people who wrote your favorite young adult novels? Then join author Eric J. Brown and Alyssa Lube of Netflix's The Circle every other Tuesday on YAOK. Available on all podcasting apps. Woo! What the listeners don't know is that uh, our guy Kyle over there showed up to Weird Ass Movie Night for the first time ever. So the question is on the table, Kyle. If Mm -hmm. you were running Weird Ass Movie Night and you showed Shriek of the Mutilated, what would be one of the other features that Mm. you would have to play along with it? Well, listen, I, I, I'm I'm no I'm no maestro like you, uh, Matt Kelly, uh, because I, I'm not I'm not I'm just kind of staying in the lane <laughs> of, of this because uh, I I think I'd want to watch Blood Feast. Um, I fair. think that for me, like yep. it, 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 you know, it's in the same category. It's done. It, even more over the top uh it was that was on my i had like a couple double feature ideas and that was definitely on there yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i i'm i'm going blood feast uh yeah fair how Absolutely about you fair. scott well i was gonna say motel hell but if he's doing blood feast i'm gonna do blood diner oh Ooh, nice. a blood buffet blood buffet <laughs> Buffet, <laughs> Bobby Buffet. So I wrote down like a very on the nose one, and then an off the beaten path one. Um, the on the nose one is just the movie Snow Beast, the only other horror film from the seventies I can think of about a yeti. Uh, but the isn't off the Winter Beast path, also a, a, a yeah? Yeti movie? It's just they're all basically the same <laughs> film. <laughs> um, off the beaten path, though, I wrote down. Uh, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. There was something about wow. the the okay. clothing, the weird tone shifts constantly that made me just feel like, like I mean, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes is way more directly a parody of something, mm-hmm. but they're both movies trying the best that they can do with as small of a budget as they can handle, and they have their weird charms in both films for what they're able to pull off. Well, all their money went to hop uh, to popcorn by Hot Butter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, That's where they spent crazy. all that all that dough. Um, and speaking of spending dough, uh, come find Horror Movie Night. Go and check out hmnpodcast.com. You get a link to our store. But you can also find our Public, where you might find even more exclusive rare shirts than you can find on our website. Go and hit up our Patreon, patreon.com backslash hmnpodcast. And find us on all social media. Hang out, chat with us, support the show. We love it. We love it. We love it. And unless my two lovely co-hosts have anything else they need to bring up, Kyle, I have to ask, what have you watched, read, listened to, et cetera, lately? Yeah, so I mean, I did, I did attend, I did attend Weird Ass Movie Night, uh, and it uh, introduced me to, well, I, I got introduced to two films that I had never seen before, but the the one that uh, I got super stoked about, I had never seen Idle Hands. And this blew my mind when Matt texted me. This. Dude, I. <laughs> I, in full disclosure, I had one of, um, can I say Barb's cookies? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So Bar- Barb uh, made a full batch of Dorito cookies, uh, and I decided to eat one, 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 
Um, and it the recommended me. amount is a quarter of a cookie. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> yeah. god. Which no I wonder when before. I texted I... you, you're like, I am so fucking high right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was. I felt I, bad. I was having like, a time of my life. Yeah. I, I do feel bad, and I, I, you know, there was, there were, there were um, friends who were there of yours, Matt, who also listened to the show, which. Um, Shout out all of you, uh, like Kelly and well, Eli doesn't care, but um, you know, I I was just like I am really leaning into who I am on the podcast, and I'm not <laughs> I'm not super. I couldn't be more social, or I couldn't be more unhinged at that time in my life. Um, but Idle Hands uh, rips. I mean, I don't think I have to tell anybody here, but I just I, I just want to celebrate that it is a really really great film. Uh, yeah. It's so much fun. Uh, it is. Uh, it felt like it was a film made for me. Like I, I love that it was like a stoner horror comedy, and, and also leaned into like gore in a really effective way. And like it just, it just had everything that I loved, and I couldn't believe it had taken me this long to see it. So um, I loved Idle Hands. That was the that was the uh, the middle picture between. Um, Ernest uh, scared, stupid. scared stupid, which I did not pay any attention to because I was talking to everybody. And then VHS, which I also had such a great time with. I cannot recommend that enough. I think that like we talk about WNUF a lot on this show. Um, we talk about uh, other sort of like um, a parody again is not the, the right word. Um, but we talk about things that are emulating a certain thing. And I, I love that VHS was exploring truly like the architecture of a VHS tape, which I think is so such an interesting approach to like shooting a VHS aesthetic thing. Yeah. You know, like if you take like what a tape is physically and what exists on the tape, and then you're also to create a story about like what that tape does, but then reflecting that in the film, I thought it was just like, it just elevated that, um, beyond For, some of the other things that I had seen in that sort of aesthetic. Yeah, because VHS is so obscure to a lot of people, I do want to just kind of give a quick pitch of what it is. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Is that VHS uh, is you are watching a singular VHS tape from a nine-year-old child who receives his first camcorder on Christmas morning, like 1987. Um, and unbeknownst to the child at the time, he's taping over his parents' wedding tape. So you keep getting these shots of his parents getting married throughout the video. And then it goes back to like him filming bits with his friends. But he also will just plug the camera into the TV and tape like late night television. And all the late night television stuff is like Thomas Lennon and Car- and uh, uh, Colin Robinson-, Robinson from What We Do in the Shadows. And all these like incredible improv comics like recreating their versions of like, uh, you know, the art of painting with with Bob you know, Ross, Bob Ross mm-hmm. or like a infomercial or like the one is like a late night television sex comedy show, but it's on like basic cable. So they have to cut all the sex out. So it's just like things getting hot and heavy and then jump cut to after the fact and like all the information is gone. Um, but what makes it so interesting is while you're watching all this sketch comedy and you're watching this kid tape over his parents wedding video Anytime that he's filming bits with his friends, you can see that his parents' marriage is crumbling in real life. So it's like this symbolic element That's of like fucking cool. He's, it's really, really cool. That's and then cool. there's it gets spooky towards the end because he watches a show about a supposedly haunted uh sorority house and it happens to be where his town is. So he's like, Oh, I'm gonna definitely go to that sorority house at night. And then it just gets like david cronenberg level existential Mm -hmm. as he's like walking around in that house so it's just it juggles so many different things it's so interesting um i saw it at fantastic fest and i remember after he did it so many people were like how much of wnuf halloween special was an inspiration and the guy was like i've never even heard of this but i'm making it a point to watch it because like people keep comparing it and he's like i i love that that there's other people that did this before me and i want to Make sure that I respect that enough to watch it myself now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. VHS is a ton of fun. I'm gonna bounce off of that because I, uh, I think I was talking to you about it. I just watched my friend Tommy Avalone's new documentary, which yeah. at the time that this episode comes out, it is available if you have the Fubu channel. Um, 
it's on the Maximum Effort channel on there, which I think is Ryan Reynolds like channel of original content. Um, and then it's available for VOD anywhere. It's called The House From. Um, it's a documentary about people who live in houses that are made famous from movies and television shows. Uh, and he sits down and talks to the people who live there, the people who visit it. Uh, and it's just very compelling. It's a really compelling story. It's also a story about toxic fandom mm. um, and just how some of these people kind of feel like like you've got these shitty fans that feel like the world is owed to them and have like no respect for their privacy. You have like a grandmother who lives in the house that Friday was filmed at that has to deal with people getting stoned and drunk on her front porch all day while she's like watching her grandkids or like the woman who lived in the Goonies house who literally had to sleep with a shotgun next to her bed because people would just come up on her porch at all hours of the night and start doing the truffle shuffle. And Jesus like, Christ. she started to feel like a genuine safety situation that there was always strangers roaming her property. Um, so it, it covers that element. And then it covers like the people who do good. They purchase a house. They, I think is the one person bought the house from the Christmas story and they, turned it into a Christmas story museum and they use yep. that to raise money for their township and their community. And like, it kind of just looks at all the different ways that you can do things. A um, lot of horror stuff in there. They, they talk a lot about like the different Halloween locations and the science of the lamb house, which is now an Airbnb uh, mm. that you can stay at. You like, see homeboy at creature feature weekend. He always has a booth there. <laughs> he does. He uh, always he does, has a always booth, has a booth right at the entrance of the vendor hallway, <laughs> like the leg of the vendor hallway. Uh, yes. I hope that he's wow. there uh, at this point. Um, yeah, it's legit. But yeah, uh, the trailer it. looks it's... great. I, and, the, and I was very interested in the doc after you. Had, yeah. Uh, oh, I know the most appealing thing for Scott is <laughs> he goes to this one house that has been used in like a billion movies. Like it's probably the house from Risky Business. It's definitely Stifler's house from the first two American Pie movies. <laughs> but my friend Tommy cared the most that it's the house where the party is held and can't hardly wait. Nice. Um, so he literally brings Ethan Embry and one of the nerds. Uh, from the movie to come to the house and recreate moments from the movie. <laughs> Incredible. And it's like my favorite moment in the movie. It's so charming uh, to watch. Although Ethan Embry does definitely talks some shit on uh, Can Harley Wait a little I'm bit. He's like, hey, you should see He's like, you should see it. I uh, stalk a girl until she dates me. <laughs> I mean, the movie is problematic, and that's probably the reason why I haven't watched it in at least yeah. a decade. So. And, and I did ask Tommy about that. He's like, Ethan has a weird relationship with two of his most famous movies which are empire records and can't hardly wait because like he wanted to do like both of those movies were sold to him as like hard r teen comedies that uh. were going to be filled with like sex drugs and rock and roll and then both of those movies back to back got edited down to a pg-13 equivalent so it's like he can't separate what the movie he shot was to like what the movie that actually got released was yeah. um, well, when you think like, about I, his trajectory into movies like the guest and um cheap thrills it makes absolute and, yeah, yeah. Devil's candy. Like, it all makes sense yeah yeah but all right so that was it scott take us home well um fully understanding that i am a middle-aged white guy on a podcast i'm gonna keep this real short and sweet but um i was not impressed by the substance um okay I don't. I feel like such. This a is interesting because I don't think that you would have been swayed by hype. Like this doesn't feel. Well, like I wasn't was hyped. Like a, no, 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 no. I wasn't. Right. I wasn't hyped at all. Yeah. I just mean yeah. like. It didn't shock me. Like mm. people were being like, "Oh my god, this movie is such a mind fuck." Oh my god, it's just like society. It's. It has a lot of things in it that are homages to Cronenberg and body horror and the stuff toxic popular toxic you know celebrity I think that there is a good movie there's a good social commentary in the movie I just don't think that they were able to really I, I don't know. I just felt like really underwhelmed by the social commentary of it because it was so surface level, which is ironic. Um, it was very like beat you over the head with the idea that like once women 
reach 35 in Hollywood. I mean, it's just so surface level. Like once you reach 35 in Hollywood, you're, you're, you, you have no value and you should die is basically like the, it's not subtle. And I guess that that's kind of what people are liking about it because it's like, but for me, I just thought the writing was bad. I think the acting is fine. I, th- I think that the story, the movie is also way too long. Yeah, isn't it like two and a half hours it's long? Two and That's and been half, like it's by, two hours and 20, yeah. I think. It is it is insanely long. It took me two days to finish it. And um, I was just like, and, and I know that I'm probably going to have people coming for me about it, but I was like really underwhelmed and I can't talk about it anywhere else because I feel like people are going to drag me and be like, oh, you don't understand it. I understand it completely. I just don't think it's very good. Are you saying the movie is Lacks more style over, over yes, substance? Yes, <laughs> But I think that that's what they were trying to do. They were trying to be like, they are trying to have this subterfuge of like, oh, it's very pop. But then we have this serious thing to talk about. And I don't know. I just, it doesn't well, work for it, me. I, I also, I also find it interesting. You know, I, I'm, I'm just reserving thoughts on the film, but I, I do think that it's interesting that like, we're still telling Hollywood stories. And, and it's I like, don't Hollywood give a is fuck a thing. about Hollywood stories. Yeah. Right. Right. That's right. probably that the problem, Hollywood dude. Refle- Hollywood is yeah. less and less of a reflection of society than yeah. it used to be. Yeah. You yes. know? So it's like, um, I, I mean, I, I, I wonder if that's part of it. Uh, sure, it might not be, but I, I, I'm I'm curious to see how that continues because, like, you know, I, for me, like David Cronenberg's Maps to the Stars is probably like the last like Hollywood thing I give a fuck about, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, and I, I mean, I was like leaving LA at that same time that that had come out, and yada yada yada. But like, I do think that. You know, filmmakers telling stories that are set in Hollywood. There is like a level of like trash or like uh, voyeurism or like sure, something yeah. that we'll always enjoy. Like that's why reality TV exists. That's why like the Kardashians still is a thing. But they could easily want, you know, have done this shit. with reality TV, which isn't a Hollywood thing. You right. know, right, 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 right. So you know, there's the there's this sort of like Hollywood sheen that I don't think. Uh, it is is approachable anymore i wonder what that would look like if somebody was you know in the midwest and finding success in some sort of you know i i, I don't know what that looks like i don't know what that looks like i couldn't i'm not going to rewrite the substance but i i just i i'm i i'm curious to see it i'm interested because of your feedback on it i want uh, people to I'm, watch it i do yeah i don't yeah, yeah. wish ill on me. i just don't was understand the hype yeah was i mean Demi i good I feel like what's her name, Margaret Qualley. Qua- Qua- That's it's mm-hmm. Andy McDowell's do- daughter that plays Sue, the young woman in it. I feel like she really is the star of the movie because, like, I'm watching to me have like this breakdown, and you know, I don't think this is a spoiler to say it, but the movie wouldn't have caught, wouldn't have taken an hour and or uh, 140 minutes to get through if there would have just been better communication between Demi and the young version of the character. Sure. They do not communicate at all. And I think that this, they're trying to say something about generational dis, uh, lack of, like miscommunication. Again, I just, it feels sloppy. Um, yeah. But the funniest thing about the movie to me is that um you know everybody's talking about how demi is the is the star and i was expecting a performance more akin to requiem for a dream and i didn't Mm. get that and i was Mm. a little bummed you know Mm. but it's super fucking gory it's gross don't eat when you watch it like even for me a seasoned horror watcher like it's it's got some gross scenes like that's why i think the society of it all is coming in i think i saw someone describe it i mean i still haven't seen it but this piqued my interest more than anything uh was a guy dave lasso who is a he's helped out with a bunch of geekscape stuff over the years wrote <laughs> the substance is two hours of a david cronenberg movie that turns into a trauma film in the last 20 minutes it and really like, does it's, it's fucking wild <laughs> <Shit>. the last <laughs> no, actually, honestly, i'm completely sold now <laughs> but that's um, the thing like, you have to sit through watch. a lot of i don't know like is it really happening kind of shit yeah. mm. 
eventually I'll get there, but I mean, again, Next, I promise, Matt. A two Next and a half hour running time is, is just hard. like a bridge too yeah. far. Well, That's I a mean, lot. for horror, it's hard, man. But I, I promise yeah. you guys and the listeners, if anybody is still listening after I land base at their movie of the year, I have a really positive review for another 2024 movie next week so please don't think that i'm being a, a, an asshole all the time and it's gonna no. be fresh off the heels of the positive review of the movie that we're <laughs> discussing next week so stay tuned for more horror movie <laughs> night Do you like to laugh, geek out on music, and learn all about that band or artist who had that one song back in the day, but then seemed to fall off the face of the earth? If so, you need to subscribe to One Hit Thunder. Together with an array of interesting and hilarious guests, we do a weekly dive into one hit wonders like Eiffel 65's Blue, Crayshon's Gucci Gucci, EMF's Unbelievable, Delamitri's Roll to Me, Los Del Rio's Macarena, Musical Youth's Pass to Duchy, and even Patrick Swayze's She's Like the Wind. So are you subscribed to One Hit Thunder or what? As Desiree would say, you gotta be. And as K7 would encourage, you gotta come baby come and join in on the fun of the One Hit Thunder podcast. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.